Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Nintendo Switch, Resident Evil, E3, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about a brand new project, RetroHub, and it's a front end. It says here, RetroHub is a front end application allowing you to manage and launch a retro gaming library. It's designed to be user-friendly and easy to use, yet packed with features and highly customizable. As you're probably well aware, I'm a big fan of newcomers to the scene. I mean, at one point in time, Aether SX2 was a newcomer. All hail the blue cube. The alpha of this released back in September of last year and version 0.1.0 beta just released. Now they do state that RetroHub is still in early development and they encourage you not to move your library setup if you're already using another front end, something like LaunchBox. However, RetroHub might be worth checking out. I mean, it's 100% free, it's open source, it's available on GitHub and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. At this point in time, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Next up, we're talking about Touch HLE, where HLE stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or High Level Emulator, depending on how you want to interpret that. Anyways, Touch HLE just got a brand new update. At the time of filming, version 0.1.2 is the latest release, and this one has a whole bunch of minor changes and some arguably bigger changes. For example, MP3 is now a supported audio file. And they've got some new supported apps here, Touch and Go Light, and also a game, Super Monkey Ball Light. At this point in time, Touch HLE is targeted towards iPhone OS 2, but they might look towards iPhone OS 3 and OS 4 in the future, and maybe even OS 1. Touch HLE is 100% free, it's open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It's available for both Windows and Mac. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Egg NS. I don't like talking about this emulator, and if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I'm not a fan of it. It's been heavily accused of taking code from Yuzu and Ryujinx, and possibly even Skyline, free and open source emulators, and then closing the source and charging people to use it. Anyways, here some people have been speaking highly about Egg and S, and there might be a reason behind it. They might have been paid. Now this email from EgNS was sent to me from a verified source and I've redacted their name up above just to keep them anonymous as per their wishes. And this email is highly concerning. I've shrunk myself down to give you a better look at this email and if we take a look here it says as a reward we will give you an annual card worth 50 USD and your fans will also get generous rewards so probably an affiliate code of some sort. A sponsored post is also available. Please let me know the requirements for a partnership and if you have any questions. The good content creators out there will vet the sponsored videos. They'll take a look at the sponsors, take a look at the products and determine whether or not it fits and whether or not it's, I would argue, possibly ethical. Some people don't, they just jump at any opportunity and I'm thinking a lot of people might jump at this opportunity to make a few quick bucks. And speaking about making a few quick bucks, next up we're talking about E3, which might not be making any bucks in the future. Since Nintendo and Microsoft and Sony have pulled out of this thing, the long-term viability doesn't really seem to be there. I mean, at least in my opinion, E3 used to be the pinnacle of gaming excitement, and now with Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony having their own digital events, E3 is not really as exciting to me anymore. Yes, it's gonna have indies, which I absolutely love, but at the same time, without the big three there, I really don't know what value I'm gonna get out of this one. I would like to hear your opinions on this one. Do you think E3's days are numbered or do you think this still has a whole ton to offer and maybe I'm missing something? Let me know in the comments below. And speaking about opinions and numbers, next up here we're talking about Resident Evil 4. And physical copies of RE4 on the PS5 have surfaced over on Reset Era. I'm curious to see what you have to say about this one. Are you excited? Are you not? Let me know in the comments below. And continuing to talk about numbers, last up here we're talking about SNES 9X. And I may have made a bit of a mistake. I was looking at this emulator yesterday and we talked about it in yesterday's video, but I got the date mixed up. So it says March 4th, 2022. 2022 is last year, not this year, we're into 2023. So this emulator was not updated. They are working on the GitHub though, it's still active. Don't get me wrong there, it just hasn't had a new release just yet. When I was looking through the change log, I was thinking this looks really, really familiar, but maybe I'm just going crazy. 
Turns out I wasn't. So shoutouts to those of you who pointed out my mistake in the fact that I might have been living in the past. I mean, the month and the day were seemingly correct, but the year was completely off. So my apologies there on this one. SNES 9X is still active, though if you take a look at the GitHub, it was last updated. Well, something was updated yesterday. So I'm expecting a release at some point in the future. I just don't know when. It's still active, though, and that's a good sign. I'll drop a link to the SNES 9X GitHub in the description below in the event that you do want to check it out. It's still an amazing emulator. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.